Hello people of YouTube. Today um, I'm going to show you how to upgrade to a solid state drive in the Lenovo IdeaPad S210. Um, in case you don't know, I have another review of it. It's a budget laptop. Um, I think they're classifying it as an ultra portable. It was under $300, I saw Newegg had them for around $320 or $330 on sale recently. Um, I got mine on Black Friday. So, uh, this has been kind of a challenge as are, I think, most Windows 8 laptops uh, running UEFI can sometimes cause the cloning operations to not quite work all that well. Um, there's basically two methods I'm going to show you today to get your hard drive uh, or your solid state drive operational. The first is the cloning method. Um, I'm using the Samsung. It came with a CD that has a cloning tool. Uh, for that you'll need some sort of a USB uh, SATA converter. Uh, what I use is this external Seagate hard drive. You just pull this off and then you've got uh, adapter cable basically. Some of the um, solid state drive kits that you could buy come with those and so you wouldn't need that if you have an external hard drive you don't need to worry about it. At least if it's one like that you can just use that uh, in connector. The other method is basically doing a clean install using the recovery files that come with the laptop off of the hard drive. So in either case, we'll need um, the solid state drive, whatever it is that you buy. You'll need uh, at least one small screwdriver. I use the other one to help pry the uh, little plastic tab so they don't break. Uh, you'll need some sort of a USB bootable flash drive if you're doing the fresh install method. If you're using the clone method and it works, um, you won't need one of these. But I haven't found a clone method that works, so we're probably going to end up going with the clean install method. Um, I'll show you the screws that you need to remove. I've already removed them all. There's nine screws that are clearly exposed on the bottom that you have to get to. It's pretty basic. Uh, just unscrew those. One little trick I like to use for keeping screws from going wild or losing them is I keep them just on the inside of some sort of a tape container. Um, it's a trick I learned a long time ago. and. If you stick them all in there, it keeps them organized and you don't lose them. The other two spots are under these little pull-out tabs. You can see my Lenovo sticker has already been pierced. There's uh, two screws under there. They're a little bit thicker. They help uh, mount the chassis to the monitor arms, so they're a little more stout. Um, once you've removed all of these screws, there's a couple of tabs I don't know how well you'll be able to see them. Basically right there uh, on the inside. And once you get those loose, um, the rest of it comes apart pretty easy. You can start prying the front of it apart like this and you'll find that it is still caught in the back. So pry the rest of the front open just to have it loose so that none of the tabs break once you get the uh, back part loose. And the way that I found that was easiest to do that is take a small flathead screwdriver and go up under this tab and then just kind of pop it out like that. Um, and then there's also a pretty good tab right under here that you'll need to catch or help um, just so you don't break them. If you break them, especially on a cheap laptop like this, it'll probably be pretty annoying just in that um, when you're typing, 
the whole chassis already kind of moves around a little bit um, that will just make that plasticky feel worse because it won't be quite as well put together and if you're worried about scuffing it up you can always use a guitar pick or something along those lines um, if you're careful you shouldn't have a problem with that using just a screwdriver here's the inside you can see the foam padding here these come with a seven millimeter hard drive um, theoretically if you remove this foam padding and then remove it from underneath the hard drive you can fit a you know quote unquote standard two and a half inch uh, solid or solid state or um, you know larger hard drive if you wanted to do like a terabyte drive or maybe one of the hybrid drives here's the Samsung drive I bought along with a uh, normal solid state drive so you can see it's quite a bit thicker um, these you know they're less than an inch thick so to do that they use thinner components um, anyway if you remove the foam you, you could probably fit a standard solid state drive in there I wouldn't recommend doing it for a spinning disc drive just because that is um, added shock protection and um, because this is uh, ultra portable you're going to be moving it around and uh, that's a common thing to fail on laptops is the hard drives the reason it's a common thing is you've got a spinning platter and if you move it around the centrifugal force of it tends to make the um, heads want to impact the platter they've made leaps and bounds as far as making that not happen very often and they uh, have all sorts of drop sensors in them and stuff like that to hurry and move the head off the platter so it won't smack it but if there is contact you'll best case scenario you'll just have some bad sectors worst case scenario your heads could get messed up and then you'll not be able to recover any of your data without sending it off to a lab basically so to upgrade the memory super simple you just pop these two tabs pull the memory out and if you are replacing it with a bigger memory just slide it in push it down and that's that um, my memory has not arrived yet so I decided to go ahead with the rest of this video to remove the hard drive unscrew there's four screws that go around the little um, adapter that is screwed to the hard drive and then just back it out gently and then um, due to doing some trial and error with the uh, cloning operations and stuff I was using a normal this laptop hard drive just one I have laying around from a different project in fact I think that's out of the uh, best or the Black Friday Best Buy laptop from last year. So anyway, I removed that just to give it a little bit of clearance and uh, was able to just kind of run it while it was torn apart. I really don't recommend that. It made kind of a creaking sound on the motherboard and I was a little concerned that I had bricked my new toy. So uh, to remove this adapter, just pull these screws out which these I think I already mentioned the um, two screws that go in here are bigger and then these screws I don't know if you can see but they're the this little one is the one that was bolting the hard drive down to the chassis and then this other screw right there is the one that holds this to the hard drive so they're all different sizes they're pretty hard to get confused Okay, so this bracket mounts the, as these little things to help hold the cables. The solid state drive goes in with the power side on the, I guess, battery side. So it goes on like that. So you want to make sure that the cable hold downs are in the right location. So basically it mounts like this. 
I screwed up the first time, so that might save you at least about a minute of screwing stuff on the wrong way. Make sure you get these tight or you may face some vibration noises once the fan kicks on. Obviously there isn't a spinning disc so that shouldn't make any noise. And just pretty much slide it back into the slot it came out of. Uh, make sure the cables are all lined up and not pinched on the other side for the antenna and stuff. And then basically reverse the process to remove it. For these, I'm actually going to use a slightly larger screwdriver out of my pack just so that I don't strip these at all. And you want to get these pretty snug because, like I said, they help uh, hold the chassis to the monitor. And the other cool thing about these grommets is they're not held on by glue. They have these little tabs. I don't know if you can see them, really. But, anyway. That's what holds them in place. Nice in that you can pop them out and do stuff like this and then you don't have to worry about them falling out later due to the adhesive being ruined by uh, contaminants like dust or the oil in your fingerprints and stuff like that. Alright, now for the moment of truth. Did the Samsung packaged cloning software work? Oh, you'll notice the F2, F12 there. That's because it's in legacy boot mode. Looks like it did work. Sweet. Thumbs up for that. I'll show you the other method as well, uh, regardless. There is the one touch recovery button on the side here. If you press that, it loads this. If you go into the BIOS setup, go under boot, change it to legacy support. By default, it's under UEFI. I'm going to change it back and see if it works. Awesome. Well, there you go. My recommendation for cloning, at least, or buying a solid state drive if you intend to clone, is get one of these. The packaged cloning software actually works. So I've just rerun the Windows Experience Index after upgrading the hard drive to the solid state Samsung. I believe that's in focus. If not, the uh, graphic score for whatever reason sometimes when you run it it goes to a 4.5 instead of 4.6 usually it's a 4.6 the disk score is what we're worried about here though it went from a 5.9 to a 7.8 the boot up time is massively faster as well as generally the system responsiveness is just far superior when you're uh, even just opening Windows Explorer before had some lag associated. This, it pops up instantaneously, launching web browsers and everything else. Um, and just generally navigating the system, it performs significantly better.